Father, we just thank you that there's really nothing else that can really totally satisfy in every area of our life. <laughs> you are the all-sufficient one. You are Adonai and El Shaddai. You are our God. God the Father. God the Son, Jesus. And God the Holy Spirit. And there's just nothing else. Nothing else. Lord, create a pure heart in us. That we truly run after the heart of you. That we truly surrender everything to you. So that God, we're not caught up in the schemes of the enemy of this world. Father God. Help us to be strong in you. Help us to understand who we are. Open our eyes of understanding, Lord. Because <laughs> ah, there's nothing else, Lord. <laughs> Have your way tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name, all God's people said. Jeez, how do you follow that? How do you just follow? How do you just follow that, right? How do you follow a prayer that is just so heart-filled and and it's just what the Lord wants to hear from us, right? He's amazing. So um, as I was um, up here worshiping and. I just kept hearing uh, signs, miracles, and wonders. So just bear with me a minute before I direct you to go any place. Um, so in Hebrews it says in chapter 2, 4, it says, God is also bearing witness both with signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Amen? Amen. Are we good? You got, you got to turn. I got every, I have every mic. You got every mic off. Yeah, they're off. Okay. We didn't have this problem before. <laughs> Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. time. All right, so I kept hearing about signs, miracles, and wonders, and, and so one of the things that we've been talking about in discipleship classes, um, about how God reveals himself to us, and, and so we've been doing this for the last few weeks, and again, you guys heard the assignment, because the Lord really wants us to pay attention, that he's in our atmosphere, that he lives inside of us, that he's on our team, you know, that the plan that he has is good for us, and so even in the midst of trials, tribulation and different things that we go through God is still there he's not off the throne he didn't go on break he's still in our lives amen and he's going for the goal he's going for the touchdown and he's carrying us sometimes we're kicking and screaming because he's carrying us the way we don't want to go we don't want to go that way we don't want it to happen that way we want to do it our way we we have brains we don't want to follow directions from leaders you know the world has problem with following directions from leaders today unfortunately we raised up a, a, a generation that feels they're entitled and even some in this generation just doesn't want to um, 
follow. And God says, listen, you got to follow. You'll never be a leader if you can't follow your leader, right? And then just submit without complaining and, and being all upset about decisions and stuff that's going on. And so God is on the move and he's wanting to do something in us. And so if that's what bubbles up inside of us, we need to deal with it right away, right? Amen. If we're struggling with strife and we just argue all the time, we want to argue with people all the time, we want to be right all the time, it's just something that turn the main down just a little bit, the red one, thanks. Um, um, so that what will happen is um, we're just going to be argusome, you know, and quarrelsome. And what, what effectiveness is that going to be for the kingdom of heaven? Yeah. It's just not, right? Yeah. God didn't call us to argue. As a matter of fact, the word of God says don't get caught up. Don't go into those places. And this is what we were talking about this week, too. We're not, we don't want to, we don't want to argue denomination. We don't want to argue Bible. We don't want to argue people stuff. We want to stay focused on Jesus because if we start doing all this stuff out here, we're not going to be focused on Jesus and we're not going to be earthly good to anybody because spiritually we're a mess and nobody's going to want to come and follow us because we're just, we're just grunted people sitting in pews, keeping them warm, but there's no effectiveness in our life. Because we got offended. We got offended. Signs, miracles, and wonders want to move through God's people, but are you offended? Are you? Don't answer that, but are you? I mean, come on. I'm going to use this because Jan uses it all the time. And this was about the time that um, the I think the little girl at the rodeo was that one, Jan? And so um, I was dropping Jan off one day, and she was explaining something to me in her personal life, and she was really struggling um, emotionally about it. And the Holy Spirit, like he does, asked her a question. And he said, if, that, if you would have been there and that would have happened to that little girl in front of you, would you have been able to pray for her? Something like that. And it, it changed Jan's life. I didn't come up with the question. I didn't even pre-think it. It just came out of me because that's what God does. Amen. And so um, in that, Jan has never forgot that. And I think about those days often because those days are the days that we need to be walking in. Where nothing mattered except for Jesus. That you didn't, you know, one of the things I asked the Lord when I started following him is, God, I don't want to know the politics of church. I don't want to get involved in the offices. I don't want to know what's going on behind the scenes. This is my honeymoon period, and I'm enjoying it, and I want it to be this way. But unfortunately, that's not what's going to happen because you're not going to grow in your honeymoon period. You'll never know your husband, the Lord, the way that you should. You'll never know his attributes and who he is. You'll never be influenced by who he is just on a honeymoon. You have to have a lifelong relationship with him. And so shortly after that, that's exactly where he sent me was to know all this stuff going on in the church very quickly, very quickly, not realizing that he was preparing me for ministry several years later, but very quickly. And I didn't want to know, but what it did, it made me always check my heart, respect my leaders, regardless if I was away with them and I seen things that they did that were not so cool. You know, because they're human beings. I never took a hold of those things and judged them. I never challenged them. I followed them. And I loved them. And I lifted them up before the Lord because that was my place. Yes. So in this relationship with Jesus, he started transforming me. And he's transforming you. And I don't know what it looks like in your life and where you're at and what's going on. But God wants to move in signs, miracles, and wonders in our lives. We started River of Life Ministry, and right away the Holy Spirit said, signs, miracles, and wonders will come out of this church because I'm going to do it. Yeah. And he's done some already, but he wants to do more. But if we're not discipled and we don't get past our flesh and overcome our offenses and get past our, our junk, don't expect him to move through you. He might move around you. He might even move through you because of the benefit of somebody else. But you'll still have that sinking junk inside of you because you're just not in right fellowship with the Lord. 
The best relationship in the world is right relationship with the Lord. And we can't toy with that. We can't toy with it in argument. We can't toy with it in lust. We can't toy with it in, in the things of the flesh and the gods of this world. You cannot toy with it because it will, it will start to darken that light. The basket will start to cover the light. And I feel like that's so important for us tonight. For me. You know, I have a lot of stuff going on all the time. And, and I have to make sure that my light shines. I have to make sure that I spend time with God. I have to do what he asks me to do, regardless of how I feel or what I think or what I want. I have to be obedient to him because he's the one. He's the one. He's gifted me with so many amazing gifts within me, which is all him. See, he gifted me with himself, the Holy Spirit. That's the gift. The gifts that flow through you that are the Holy Spirits, that's who they are. They don't belong to you or to me. They belong to him, which means all the praise, honor, and glory goes to him. Amen. We're just blessed that he chooses to use us in the state that we really are. Sometimes he uses us when we feel like we are the lowest of the lowest on earth. But he chooses to use us anyways. Because he looks beyond who you think you are. Amen. And he goes after who you are in him. Amen. 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 Nothing else. Nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. See, the Word of God teaches that He gives us a part of who he is, the Holy Spirit. And he dwells within these earth and temples. I've been reading in John, because I like John in this time of year. It's just really good, and it's good all the time. But, you know, we have been blessed with the presence of God in these earthen vessels. Now, can I say something? Be really bold here. Sexual sin is sin against Christ himself because he dwells in you. Amen. Sorry, people. It's the truth. It's, it's, but all, what about all these? It, he lives in you. Do you realize you're taking him to bed with you? You're putting him with a harlot, whether male or female. It doesn't matter. He's not a respecter in gender. It's the person. It's the spirit. So when he dwells in these bodies and we go and defile them, we put him in that place with us. You don't get away from God. Sorry. When he comes, he comes. That's it. He's there. But, you know, sexual sin, and, and, and I'm there because I've been reading about, I've been reading in the Word and in the Gospels, and it says that, man, this is the vessel of honor. It's been chosen by God himself to dwell inside of you, to dwell inside of me so that we can, what, carry his presence. And so when we do things that are against his will, he's right there. Yeah. We've jeopardized and compromised the holiness yeah. of who he is. Now, he doesn't change, but he's calling us to holiness. Now listen, it's not just sexual sin. There's a whole lot of other stuff. I just happen to throw that out there. But I want you to know that God gave us a piece of him, a part of him, a part of him that's just amazing so that we can live in this world and, and overcome it, that we don't have to succumb to the things that we hear, that we don't have to succumb to the things that are happening in the world. We don't have to walk around in depression. We don't have to walk around in oppression. We don't have to walk around cutting ourselves because we hate ourselves. We don't have to have eat eating disorders. We might not look like the way that we look, but to go and have an eating disorder, you're defiling the temple of God. Amen. It's not okay. You don't put your hand down your throat and throw up. It's not okay. 
There's going to be there's going to be stuff that comes later because of that. The devil will kill you if you will keep playing his games. Right. That's what the word says. He only comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. And why did Jesus come? To give us life and life abundantly. Right? Everything available from heaven is available here on earth through this body, through the spirit of God, because he lives here. And he can bring forth signs, miracles, and wonders, and he has. But I got to keep my heart cleansed. I got to keep my heart clean. I can't go to places other people go. They go, and it's okay. It works for them. I can't go because it defiles me, and it grieves the Holy Spirit. And then I wonder, how come I'm not hearing for God? Why don't I? I feel the way that I used to feel well because I left him over here well I went off and played over there and said I know God but I'm going to do this anyways it doesn't work for us Amen. it doesn't work for anybody somebody's going to get bit eventually and so we really want to make sure that we understand who he is and what he's doing it's important to be in the word of God Amen. It's important to read the Gospels. I love the Gospels. I, and the Old Testament, yes, I get so much, but the Gospels keeps me balanced. It keeps me to remember what God, Christ is saying to me, what his words are in red. And those things are so important to me. Yes, uh, yes, I like, I like Galatians and Ephesians and all of those, and I like those, but this is the place where I feel like I'm the closest to him is the Gospels because he's talking to me and he's showing me who he is, which means that's who I really am in him. And this is his will. And he gave me, listen, tomorrow is Good Friday and we're going to talk about the, the last seven things that Jesus spoke. And I went and seen John today because I was perplexed. I'm like, you know, I, I just can't go through the motions of the Gospel. I can't go through just going do something because it's a religious ritual. I can't do that. I, I can't bring a palm in on Palm Sunday and do that. You understand that? You guys maybe have been church your whole life, but I have to listen to the Holy Spirit. I When I, when I bring his word, I want his passion and his zeal and all that he is to come forth in spirit and truth. And if I'm over here and, and somebody else is just doing it and I come and I do Lord, I'm sorry that I came with my agenda. Lord, I'm sorry that, that I've just done these things just because I'm supposed to. I can't do that. Right. Amen. I can't do that. Amen. So I said to John, I said, John, listen, I've done this for the last couple of years, but this year I'm having a problem with it. So I come to talk to you, and I'm going to cry. I said, I need to bring forth the will of the Father. I need to, to take this, this third word and bring life to it by the Spirit of God, but i got to understand why we're doing it. Why? Why are we doing this? Why do we have Good Friday? It don't say you have a Good Friday in the Bible. It's not wrong to have Good Friday, but why? I need to know why. So we had this amazing conversation, and the Lord started ministering to me life. And he said, I'm going to bring life through you tomorrow. Amen. I'm going to bring life through you tomorrow. Amen. Because I've read what I'm supposed to read, and I researched it, and I can't even say Calapius or whatever his name is. C-O-L-O-P-S or something. I don't know, but I'll have it by tomorrow. But, but this is the thing. It's not, it's, that's not what's important. What's important is what was happening on the cross right. and what he was saying and why and what brought, you know what? He set the joy before him according to the gospel. Amen. He kept his mouth shut. He didn't complain that they whipped him and beat him and ripped his beard out of his face. He set his eyes on God yeah. the Father. He set his eyes on what he was brought to earth to do. He stayed there. And the joy of the Lord yes. is sitting in this room. Amen. Amen. The joy of the Lord Amen. is sitting all over the nations. He died that we could have life and life abundantly. Yes. Amen. 
So I can't just do stuff. I'm thankful that I've been asked, and last year I didn't just do stuff, but it was different last year. I'm different this year, and I should be different this year. We should all be different this year because we should have been changing. We should be growing. We should be walking in a greater revelation. We should have a zeal and a zest and a joy before us. And, and after the things of God, we should be wanting him to bring forth signs, miracles, and wonders, but not so that we get glory, not so that river of life gets glory, not so that man is seeking gets glory, but so that the Holy Spirit alone, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit alone get the glory. but I thought I had to have this to exist. Yes. I can't do these things. I do a whole lot less now than I ever did because I'm married. My husband does it all. You know, but I, and my sister sometimes continue to do it, but that's her husband. This is mine. He takes, he spoils me. He spoils me. I tell him, hey, I think the windshield wipers are splitting. Okay, I got it. I don't have to worry about stuff. But see, if I would have went my own way and continued right. to do my own thing, I'd probably be with, be with somebody that would not spoil me. Right. I would be with somebody that maybe would always be distracting me and not wanting me yeah. to serve God the way that I do because they would be jealous of me and God and jealous of me and God's people. And so God gave me a man that isn't jealous of, of me and God and he's not jealous of me and God's people. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Amen. So obedience... It says, if you love me, you obey me. That's right. Amen. If you love me, you obey me. Amen. No, I'm not, I'm not condemning not one person in this room because I talk about myself, but I know that when God talks to you, listen to him and just obey him. Just obey him. Amen. Because obedience is beautiful. And once you get to the other side of obedience, you find that joy, that peace, and that love. And that's who he is. I wanted to go and talk about the gift of his peace, but he's not letting me go there. So I'm just, I'm just sharing my heart with you today. I keep thinking about tomorrow, and I'm thinking about Easter, and, and I'm not traditional. Anybody that's been coming here pretty much knows that. Uh, but I'm also not so not religious that I've become religious, because you can do that too. But what I want is that the Holy Spirit would have his way in this church. That the word of God would come forth in spirit and truth. Amen. That God would move through his people in signs, miracles, and wonders. And it can't happen if we will not surrender to him. Amen. We all want to say, oh, I'm free, oh, I'm free, I'm this, I'm that. But when God starts stripping the heart and he starts showing you, it's like, oh, my gosh, just this week I'm going, oh, my gosh, Lord, I thought I was past this. Seriously. Repenting. I said, God, don't let up on me. Don't let up on me. Keep convicting me until this thing is gone. It cannot rule in my life. It cannot rule my emotions. It cannot interfere. I can't filter through it because if I filter through it, I'll make wrong decisions. They'll be full of this, this stuff that, that's there. So immediately I repent. I repent. I repent. 
And every time I will repent until it's over, until it's gone, because otherwise it will affect the things that I do. I don't care who it is. Pastor, priest, evangelist, lay person, not one of us don't struggle with stuff. Nobody is holy yet, but that's where we're trying to get in Christ Amen. is to allow him to transform us because he says, I am holy, therefore be holy. That means it's possible. It's possible. But it's not possible if we don't understand first his love. It's not possible if we don't start pursuing him. It's not possible if we don't crucify the flesh and walk away from the immoral things that we do. And we know we're doing them and we're doing them on purpose because our flesh likes it. It's our, and we can't when, when we're stealing from our bosses and and talking about our sister Tammy because, you know, whatever you want to talk about her about, just don't come talk to, about her to me because we'll have a problem. Um, but that's with anybody. God has a plan. Amen. Amen. And when he said sign miracles and wonders, I didn't even know. I know what they are because I knew a little bit about Benny Hinn and, uh, Weird. <laughs> At the time, I thought so. Like, weird. Quit pushing them people down. What are you doing picking them back up and throwing them back down the ground? What the heck is that kind of stuff all about, right? So then when I came into the spirit and started learning about God and I would go up and get prayed for, I would just plant myself. Like, <laughs> nobody's pushing me down. Nobody pushed me down. But I was always ready for it because that's what you think is always happening, right? But when the Holy Spirit asked me to yield... I yielded and went down in the spirit. And, and when I laid there, I was aware of what was going on around me, but I wasn't paying attention. I was meditating. I was listening to God as he was removing stuff out of me. There's been times where I've been on the ground and not know what happened for 20 minutes and came up changed. Yes. There's times I've been down there and I felt like I was waking up out of surgery, like what the heck just happened to me as I'm like schooling off the floor because it freaked me out the first time. But this is what I said to him. I want everything that's you. Amen. Amen. I don't want anything that's not you. I don't want no faults. Yes. I don't want no junk. I want God. If this is what you got to do to heal me and get me past my flesh, you got to knock me out and do open heart surgery on me while I'm down. You do it. That's right. I'll let you because all I want is you because there's nothing else. Yes. That's right. There's nothing else but him. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm at that place with him, I want him to move mm -hmm. in signs, miracles, and wonders because I'm starting to, like, do you get that, like, passion and you you get a little weepy or you see things and people and you kind of weep and, and you feel their pain and I mean I remember there was a girl in here that was getting prayed for and she had cancer and they came from Grand Rapids and and um, her husband this these are crazy things God did back in the day with me and her husband came up and he put his hands on her back and I I put my hand on his hand like this as his hand's on the shoulder, I put my hand right here. And the Holy Spirit said he doesn't believe. He doesn't believe that she can be healed. And I said, God, what does that mean? He said he's her covering. See, the Holy Spirit will let you know things. So I wrote the, the guy that brought her. He was an elder of their church. And I said... Oh my gosh, this is what the Lord showed me, and this is what he said, and I don't even know if it's in the Bible, but this is what I'm hearing, and oh my gosh, this is so important that we believe. Amen. Don't be laying hands on somebody when you don't believe. Don't you be laying hands on people and pretending. Don't you just do it out of, because that's what everybody else does, and that's what the Christianese all do. No. You believe or you step back and you say, Lord, help me with my unbelief. Yes. Because I know you can do it, but I'm just a little fickle about it. 
because he wants to move, because he's amazing. God's going to start doing more and yes. more and more. I already know this. I feel it in my spirit. I know. I feel like half of my battles this past year has been because of that, yeah. because this is what God's going to do. And other people see it and know it, and they've said it, and they've come to me, and they send me stuff, and they say stuff. And I'm glad that I don't see it like in Joyce, because then I would want the glory, and I would want to control it, and I would want to be the one. I don't want to be the one. I want to just be what God wants me to be. No. Amen. But I've been chosen, and I know that. Do you know that? Do you know that you're chosen? Do you know that you're chosen? If you're fighting with your flesh, it's time to conquer it. Because we're chosen. Because God is going to move with or without us. <laughs> and Amanda, I just got to tell you that God is going to use you and I, I can almost hear your thoughts right now and the stuff that's going through your head. And I want you to know that you don't have to know anything except for the Lord and just be in relationship with him and allow him to be who he is in and through you. And the Lord wants you to know that he is going to use you, that it's not by the measure of what you think or the measure of what other people think or the measure of your past. It is by his spirit. Is how he moves. And so as we allow him to be who he is in and through us, he just moves. And the cool thing is even the little things are just as important as the big things. Every sign, every miracle, every wonder, whether it be small or great, it's the same. The same God. The same one doing it all. And the measurement is just obedience. The measurement is love. The measurement isn't how big the miracle is or how small the miracle is because you've got to understand this. Some are, are entrusted with 30, some are entrusted with 60, and some are entrusted with 100. I'm talking people, but also gifts and things. God gives us portions, but what are you going to do with the portion that he's given you now? Right? You have to be faithful with the portion that he's given you now. I can't do it for you. I can't run the race. I can't win it for you. I can't get you to obey God. I can't make you do anything. You have to choose. And most of the time, uh, I'm just going to point you right back to God. Amen. Because that's the only way we'll ever accomplish anything in him. In him. All right, I'm going to close, but I want to read. I am going to read it. And so this was in John 14. <clears throat> it says, These things I have spoken to you while being present with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. And so I bank on this. I feel that, you know, the Holy Spirit, God has given me the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And so what is that? What do you mean by that? Well, okay, so first of all, you see the, the Trinity here, right? You see God the Father, and you see the name Jesus, and you see the Holy Spirit. But in my name, I will send in my name, and he will teach you all things. The Holy Spirit truly does teach us all things. Um, but I want you to know that in this, that he will bring to remembrance. So as we read the word and as we have fellowship with him and as he does things, he is speaking to us and he will. Whether you think you have a good memory or not, the Holy Spirit will bring things to, brings things to remembrance. He'll also let you know of things to come. He's let me so often know of things to come. One of the things that he lets me know about things to come is sometimes he lets me know um, in advance a person that may be here that's going to leave. And he's done that in the last year. And he had told me um, um, two, two different sets of people and both of them left. And so I'm glad that he told me so I wasn't distraught and wondered I, and what happened to them and where did they go and, you know, did I do something wrong? But the Lord lets me know, no, you didn't do anything wrong. Um, they're just going to leave. And, and, and then what we should do when we leave is go and let your pastors know. And your pastor should bless you as long as you're not leaving with a big chip on your shoulder and you have a fence. Um, because if a person feels called to another body of Christ to worship, then we want them to be there, right? Um, but if they're leaving because they're offended and they just got, you know, a big old plank in their eye, we want to help them. But you don't want to keep them here if they don't want to be here. But it's courtesy because we care 
about you. People come and say to me, Kenny is a good one, and he'll say, so what happened to so-and-so? I haven't seen them in a while. I've been worried about them. I've been thinking about them, you know, and, and we sh because we care about each other, right? But I have no answers. I might know where they're at, but I have no answers because I didn't get to, you know, bless them and say, yeah, they, because I would let you know that. Anyways, probably in discipleship class because I like to keep everybody informed because Jesus wants us informed, right? So if we want to model after him, especially as leaders, you want to keep your people informed the best that you can. But yes, you do have the 12, and yes, he had the three, and there's, there's times where you can't display everything. But Jesus really walked among the people, and he loved on them, and he let them know, you know, and he taught them so that they could go out and um, be successful. So peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back. If you love me, you would re re rejoice because I said this. I'm going to the Father, of course this is Jesus speaking, I'm going to the Father, and my Father is greater than I. I love this because one of the scriptures we brought out is that, you know, Jesus doesn't do anything except what he says, sees his father do. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. Amen. And now I have told you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. I love this. Because, see, Jesus freely gave up his life. He, the ruler of the world, Satan, could not do what he did to Jesus. Jesus allowed it. He could have done anything. And, and Satan would be gone. Every angel, every dark angel, he could do anything because he's God. But he set his joy before him so he could get to the cross for us. Because we are important. He says, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and the Father gave me commandment. So I do. Arise, let us go from here. And then it goes on to the true vine and the branches. So I just love that we have the gift of the Holy Spirit and that we're without excuse. And, and I know that sometimes I say things that can be kind of harsh, uh, from here, but I'm really just talking because that's my personality and that's how God talks to me. But if your heart is right with the Lord, you shouldn't get offended. You shouldn't get all pricked and get angry if anything, if anger comes, there might be a little truth to that, you know, like get over yourself. Um, so uh, normally that would be flesh. But I, I want you to know that God put his spirit in us for a reason. Not only so that we could be transformed and renewed and become the people that God has called us to be, but so that we could go out and change a world. So that we could go out and bring people into the kingdom of heaven. Not because of what we know, but because of who he is working through us, that we go against the grain of the world. And I don't mean by picketing. I mean, when somebody said, well, I'm, you know, they're homeless or probably drug addicts. I ain't going to give them any money. And you go up and you give them granola bars. <laughs> hey, yeah. have them in your car. If you live in Grand Rapids or any of the uh, uh, bigger cities, you should have them in your car because they're all over the place. You go to Muskegon, they're there. They're hungry. You might not give them money, but you're giving them something, and you can just say, hey, God bless you, you know? I think you and somebody else prayed for somebody on the corner here in Manistee that was here for a while. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, you just never know. And the world's like, uh-uh, I'm not going to do that. You know, and Christians, I ain't going to do that. They, you know, they're, you don't know how much mental illness is homeless out there. Yeah, that's right. You don't know how many veterans are out there that lost it. But ask Jesus because there's nothing else. He'll tell you, yes, bless that person. Yes, do that. And you don't have to preach. You just have to say, the Holy Spirit told me to give this to you. God bless you. God said. One time I gave a guy money at, at McDonald's. I was in the semi and got out of the semi. And uh, David's like, are you crazy? What are you going to go do? I said, I'm going to go give that guy some money. 
He says, well, he's going to go take it and buy beer. I said, I don't care. I'm going to give him money. So I went and gave him money. He sent it in front of McDonald's. And I gave him money. He got up, walked across the... I don't care. I sowed it under the Lord. Yeah, that's right. How do I know he's not going to get a gallon of milk for a baby at home? I don't know. All I know is he says, do it, do it. Yeah. Because we're peculiar. We're not supposed to be like the world. We're not supposed to be like everybody else. We're not supposed to listen to our minds. We're supposed to listen to the spirit of the living God and walk in the mind of Christ and do the things that other people don't do, but not for our gratification and glory. And, oh, I feel good, but so that he gets recognition. You're sowing seeds that you may never see come to, to fruition, but God knows, and you be the hand of God. Let's pray. Dave, you need to come up here to play, play us out. So, Father, I just really thank you just for your heartbeat in my chest, how you're transforming me and my ways. You're revealing wickedness and wrong things, and I just want to be right before you because there's nothing else. I just want you. Speak to our hearts tonight as we close out with that song. And God, where we have done things, or you, there's, if there's conviction to be done, convict us, Lord, because not one of us in this room really want to be the same as we did. Coming in, we want to leave different. So, Lord, change us by your love. Change us by your spirit. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen. amen and amen. Yeah, you can take that. So hang on just a second. Dave's going to get us ready. How's everybody doing? We could just sing, couldn't we? Pretty amazing song. You got us ready, Shay? Just want to want to just look and make sure that I'm not gonna short anything God wants to do in the house tonight. Um, Kenny, I just want to say that um, there's an appreciation for you from heaven, and I want to say this because that's what I'm hearing. The word appreciation. The Lord says that not that you do everything right. None of us do. But not everybody knows this, but you're your own worst enemy at times. You're harder on yourself with the Lord, in the presence of the Lord, than anybody else would know. But God knows. And um, there's an appreciation from heaven for you. And I don't know what that pertains to in your life, but I'm supposed to tell you that tonight. Thank you. See, sometimes all we see is us when we explode or we do things wrong and we can't get past the bad. And we need to get past the bad. We need to lay it down. Let God do what he wants to do. Frankie, I feel like uh, the Lord is saying change is coming. I know you've already had a lot of change. Uh, right? Like, don't say that to me. Uh, and I, it's, it's good. So it's not bad. I just feel like there's a change coming. I don't know if you've been praying for something or you in spring have been praying for something, but I feel like that there's a change coming and you're going to know, you're going to remember this word. You're going to be like, okay, God, you told me that through Pastor Joyce. This must be it. When it comes, the Lord says to walk through it in prayer. Um, I almost feel like there's going to be excitement about it. And so you don't want to be led by the emotion of it. You want to be led by the wisdom, what God has planned for you in that change. So that's for you tonight. Yeah, it's good. So, yeah, and Mike, um, also there's some things that you do behind the scenes that most people don't see. And the Lord says that he does. And he is your Jehovah Jireh, or he is... He's your Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, your provider. And you already know that, but God says that um, you're going to see that more in your life. 
Um, and it's not because you do things for that reason. You just serve God because you just love God. And you look out for the underdog that other people might not look out for. And you do that. And he says that you have a servant's heart and it does not go unnoticed. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Okay, you guys, let's stand up. And uh, Dave is going to get us ready. And we are going to close out with this amazing song, you guys. So if you need to come up and be here at the altar, please do that. Don't, don't walk out without...